One winter day in the city of Newark, a mysterious event began to unfold. Straight from the sky, genderless snow-white creatures descended to the ground, dubbed angels by the locals. No one understood why they arrived on Earth and what aim they were pursuing. They were wingless creatures with bony fingers and hollow eyes. However, life went on, and people quickly adapted to the presence of mystical guests among them. On Christmas Eve, a man named Brian spends a long time examining a shelf of dolls before settling on one. At the moment of payment, the cashier accidentally drops the change from her hands. Several coins clatter to the floor, triggering unpleasant memories for Brian. In a subdued state, he returns home. Opening a bottle of beer, he starts wrapping presents. He signs one for his daughter Tabitha and carefully places it under the Christmas tree. After finishing her work shift, his wife Amy returns and emotionally recounts her day. She asks Brian to get ready so they won't be late for a meeting. Brian remains seated in his chair and tells his wife that he's not feeling well and would prefer to stay home. Amy is disappointed by his words and tries to convey the importance of their presence in the meetings. She believes that connecting with people who have also lost their children can help them cope with the loss. Brian loses his composure and shouts at his wife. He is convinced that they have nothing in common with the people in the group because their daughter is still alive. Amy decides not to argue with her husband and goes to the meeting alone. Brian attends a hypnosis session to recover memories of the day his daughter disappeared. He recalls picking up Tabitha from ballet class, and they went to a cafe for ice cream. While paying for the purchase, the girl noticed a dog outside and asked her father to let her go out to play with the pet. Brian agreed, warning the girl not to go too far. In just a few seconds of distraction by the coins accidentally dropped on the floor, Brian exited the cafe to find that his daughter had disappeared, leaving her ice cream behind. During the recount, Brian begins to grimace from painful memories. In desperation, he ran down the street, questioning passers-by about Tabitha, but no one had seen her. Suddenly, a black minivan appears in his memory, parked near the cafe. The hypnotist insists that Brian make an effort to remember the license plate. Focusing on that moment, he finally recalls the necessary information. Holding the sheet with the number in his hands, he heads to the police station. The officer greets Brian warmly, but his expression changes sharply when he learns the purpose of the visit. Despite a whole year passing since his daughter's disappearance, the loving father doesn't lose hope that she can still be found. The officer assures him that the detective is actively investigating Tabitha's case and won't rest until results are achieved. His words give Brian a glimmer of hope. At the meeting, Amy shares a touching story about Tabitha. The girl passionately loved ballet and, despite her young age, earnestly wanted to become a professional ballerina. She dreamed of beautiful brown toe shoes, but only pink ones were sold in stores. Filled with love for his daughter, Brian took brown markers and hand-colored the shoes. Despite the obvious forgery, the daughter was thrilled with her new ballet shoes. Now, those markers serve as a sad reminder of her since her disappearance. Parents criticize Amy for participating in meetings for those who have permanently lost their children when Tabitha's fate remains unknown. She decides to end her story and leaves the meeting with a heavy heart. At that moment, the detective leading Tabitha's case contacts her. In her eyes, a glimmer of hope flashes, perhaps her daughter is finally found. However, the detective informs her that he plans to check the license plate remembered by Brian during hypnosis. While the idea seems somewhat crazy to him, it could lead to a decisive breakthrough in the search for the missing girl. The woman gets into her car, trying to calm her emotions after what she heard. Suddenly, the silhouette of a girl in a ballet outfit rushing toward abandoned buildings catches her eye. Thinking it might be Tabitha, the excited Amy instinctively follows her. She finds herself inside a warehouse that a homeless person has turned into temporary housing. Next to a sleeping man is a cart, and despite a bad feeling, Amy decides to approach it. Peering inside, she horrifically discovers the head of a creature from the sky, subjected to a cruel act of violence. Upon returning home, Brian confronts his distraught wife but doesn't attach much importance to it. Mechanically opening the marker cabinet, he discovers that they are missing. In panic, he turns to Amy and asks where the markers are. In a quiet, melancholic voice, the woman tells her husband that their daughter is no longer alive. Babe, she's gone. I feel she's gone in the air, and I can't feel her anymore. Brian gets angry with Amy and refuses to acknowledge her harsh words. He condemns his wife for giving up easily and losing hope. He is confident that their daughter could come back at any moment. However, Amy insists that he face reality. Tabitha disappeared over a year ago, and there's no chance they'll ever find her. The next morning, Brian receives a call from a detective who informs him that the identity of the owner of the black minivan has been determined. Armed with information about the suspect's address, Brian decides not to wait for the results of the investigation and heads to the suspect's home himself. This action ends in tragic consequences. Brian is arrested for unlawful entry. At the police station, Amy learns that her husband's lead was useless. At the time of Tabitha's disappearance, the minivan owner wasn't even in town. Fortunately, Brian is not charged and is released after paying a fine. 
Tony, one of the meeting participants, picks up the married couple from the police station. This raises suspicion in Brian, who can't understand how his wife quickly became close to this person. At home, Amy reprimands her husband for his actions, stating that he's crossing all boundaries. Brian is convinced that the police don't care about finding Tabitha, and he wants to independently search for their daughter, using any lead. Their conversation ends in a new conflict, and Amy's patience is wearing thin. Throughout the time since their daughter's disappearance, she has been protecting her husband's feelings. She didn't argue about his drinking or when he decided to quit his job. She understood his spending on gifts for Tabitha. However, Amy is tired of being strong and carrying all the responsibility on her shoulders. Eventually, Amy confesses to Brian that she cheated on him with Tony. This sudden revelation shocks him. He confronts his wife with new accusations, refusing to listen to the reasons behind her actions. Amy begs her husband to come to his senses and fight for their marriage, otherwise, he risks losing her as well. With pain in his voice, Brian rejects this plea. He is deeply convinced that thinking about anything other than finding their daughter is equivalent to admitting her loss. Devastated and crushed by what's happening, Brian walks into a late-night diner seeking solace in alcohol. The waitress offers him beer, but he asks for something stronger. She finds a bottle of vodka in the manager's office and suggests they drink together. As they get drunk, she starts flirting with Brian, but he shows her his wedding ring. The waitress decides to share her recent revelation with the man. During her shift, she witnessed a customer hitting her child for disobedience. The scene triggered unpleasant flashbacks for her, and she went outside to calm down. Across the street, she noticed a drug dealer who regularly worked in the area. On that day, she approached him to buy some staff. The dealer offered her a unique substance, a red liquid obtained from the veins of angels that fell from the sky. He assured her of the incredible sensations she would experience. Disturbed by the sacrilegious way the drugs were obtained, the waitress still had a pounding headache from the child's cries. She decided to take the risk and try it. Afterward, her perception of the world sharply changed. All sounds in the diner became louder, and her vision seemed to zoom in. Strange images mixed with memories flashed in her mind. Feeling sick, she headed to the restroom to empty her stomach. Looking up in the mirror, she saw her face becoming faceless, and black tears streamed from her eyes. At that moment, she saw the truth. She beheld a monster hidden beneath the facade of a sweet girl. After finishing her strange tale, the waitress suggests playing a game with Brian to determine who is the worst person. Before he can respond, she reveals her transgression. She attends the same meetings as Amy, meeting parents who lost their children. Unlike them, her child didn't die, she abandoned the child in the diner outside of town. In front of the group, she shares touching stories about her daughter, mourning her loss. This way, she tries to alleviate her guilt, but lately, this lie has stopped helping her. Now, instead, she prefers to drown her conscience in alcohol and drugs. Shocked by the waitress's story, Brian anxiously asks about the whereabouts of her daughter. However, the waitress doesn't know what happened to her child and has no intention of bringing her back. She believes she's a bad mother and doesn't want to take responsibility for her daughter's fate. The girl stares at Brian, demanding him to tell his story. Brian recounts that Tabitha was in love with ballet but lacked the courage to dance in public. So, he promised to watch over her and attended every one of his daughter's classes. On that fateful day when they went for ice cream, he briefly lost sight of her when he bent down to pick up a dropped coin. In those few seconds, an unknown person abducted Tabitha. I took my eyes off her for two seconds. I lost her for 48 cents. Revealing their souls to each other, Brian and the waitress grow closer. After finishing a bottle of alcohol, they dance in the middle of the diner. In an intimate moment before a kiss, the jukebox unexpectedly shuts off. The girl hurries to it, trying to insert some change to restore the romantic atmosphere. A handful of coins slips from her hands, hitting the tiles and awakening painful memories from Brian's past. The waitress returns to her partner, but he silently leaves the diner. Strolling along a deserted night street, Brian notices Tabitha's silhouette ahead. The girl hides behind the nearest alley, and her father instantly chases after her. He turns the corner but finds no one there. His attention is drawn to a brown marker lying on the ground. Several more markers are scattered ahead, forming a kind of path leading to a trash bin. Brian looks inside the bin and discovers an angel hidden beneath a pile of newspapers. He notices that the mystical creature is seriously injured and decides to take it home. He carefully places it on Tabitha's bed, where Amy examines its wound. The couple decides not to call the police to prevent the angel from being taken for experiments. The pure white creature gazes at its rescuers with fear, unsure of what to expect. They understand its apprehension, as people, driven by greed, capture angels and dissect them to extract magical fluid for profit. Amy gently strokes the angel's face, and it trustingly leans its head toward her. The couple spends the rest of the night by the bedside of the mystical creature and suddenly wakes up to unusual sounds it makes. The angel touches its wound and then brings its finger to Amy's mouth, silently inviting her to lick the fluid. After that, it repeats the same actions with Brian. The homeowners feel a presence and express aloud the thoughts they've harbored in their minds for a long time. 
Brian is ready to admit that Tabitha is no longer alive but can't imagine his life without her. Amy tries to convince her husband that they can cope with grief and move forward, but suddenly her consciousness drifts somewhere else. They move to the living room, where Amy nervously paces back and forth, ordering Brian to remove the Christmas tree emitting an unpleasant odor. He refuses to do so, and in a fit of anger, she attacks the tree, scattering gifts around the room. Brian helplessly collapses to the floor and starts crying, blaming himself for the loss of their daughter. In such agony, the couple spends some time until their strength runs out. Later, they sit across from each other, and Brian questions his wife about her infidelity. With a laugh, the woman confesses that she enjoyed engaging in romantic escapades with someone else and did it right in their kitchen when her husband wasn't home. Brian storms out of the house and attends a gathering, where he angrily hits Tony in the face. When he returns home, Amy tenderly tends to his hand. They delve into memories of their youth and the moment when they first felt drawn to each other. Forgotten feelings flare up in their hearts, and they merge in a kiss. Unable to resist their desires any longer, they undress and surrender to the overwhelming passion. The angel descends slowly into the living room, curiously observing what is going on between the couple. It closes its eyes with pleasure, and the space around it fills with soft light. At some point, it sharply cuts its throat, and the liquid spills onto the passionate lovers. They don't notice it and reach their peak, then the light completely engulfs them. Brian and Amy find themselves in an empty concert hall. They discover Tabitha's jacket on one of the seats and watch the stage in amazement. The curtain rises, and they see their living daughter starting her performance. The parents watch in awe as Tabitha's amazing dance unfolds, unable to hold back tears. The mystery of the arrival of mystical beings on earth remained unsolved. For Brian and Amy, the encounter with the angel brought long-awaited healing to their tormented and grief-stricken hearts. They realized that their daughter was no longer with them in this world, but the angel gave them the priceless opportunity to say goodbye to her. That's how the tragic story of Brian and Amy, who lost the most precious they had. Do you think that after what happened, they will find the strength to return to normal life and move on? Tell us about your impressions of the film in the comments below, and subscribe to our channel.